Well, we did tell you just a few days ago that major propaganda media companies will start to collapse. And today we have more evidence of that, especially with the news coming out that Vice Media is now, quote, reorganizing or aka causing massive layoffs and firing 10 percent of their staff 250 people who are overpriced lazy latte drinking yuppies who think that they're better than you well i, I do have to say that did sound kind of biased and it's probably not true for all 250 people because there always is an exception to the rule and they're, they're not all bad people but there is some bad blood between me and Vice, which I will explain at the end of this video, especially with my personal encounters with them, which kind of, I guess, hopefully make you understand where I'm coming from. But a lot of people don't really have a lot of sympathy for Vice, especially since they started becoming more of a polarizing media outlet that clearly had an agenda and drastically changed from what it originally was. Now, today's news was actually broken by The Hollywood Reporter that wrote, quote, all departments at every level are expected to have layoffs from IT to finance to television, specifically impacting international divisions, as well as alleged bureaus that are known as non-core, which, of course, a lot of people were celebrating the announcement of saying, quote, that clickbait is dying while others are still shocked that vice media employed 2500 people and what people are calling this digital bloodbath that is happening right now is very significant and it's only a sign of more things to come and honestly if you've been watching this news channel shouldn't be a surprise to you at all since vice has continued to lay off a number of employees for a number of years now while of course missing key revenue targets now of course the current ceo nancy dubik who came from another major media cable network an industry that also has a lot of financial ramifications to deal with just like vice and all these other online media companies do as well very interesting choice that this is the person that has been chosen to take over this digital organization from an industry that of course hasn't learned to adopt now of course this current ceo is saying that with these changes that they are quote adopting and that this will make vice the best manifestation of itself and cement its place long into the future and uh, i do believe nancy is not correct here as vice is way, way, way overvalued previously in 2007 being valued at quote $5.7 billion with of course many corporatist and globalist industries throwing their money at that media organization. A huge over evaluation that is now finally facing a correction. And this is why people are surprised that they actually were able to hire as many as 2,000 500 people now this is something that the former ceo of vice news shane smith even saw himself when he was replaced by of course this current ceo with shane smith even publicly saying that there's going to be a digital media bloodbath coming and him actually selling a lot of his stocks from these media companies off way before this calamity or as we should really say this correction that is happening right now and, and trust me there's a lot of correcting still to be had not only on the financial side of these bigger media organizations but also the public side that predominantly is not shedding a tear for vice with the news that is coming out today and hell i don't blame them to, to be completely honest with you and i of course predict a lot more layoffs to come as even the ceo said that they're quote not going to rule out more layoffs at the company now what's important to understand here is that this is not just an isolated case this is happening to a lot of online digital companies a lot of them who share the same kind of values and have been mainly pushing clickbait identity politics cancerous divisive content that in my opinion has been the dirtiest slimiest crap that to me is identified with the huge layers of cognitive dissonance and hypocrisy that it is drenched in as we are seeing now with of course other media organizations and even former buzzfeed employees coming out and insinuating that the recent layoffs at buzzfeed 
were motivated because of race and sexual orientation. Which had Count Dacula respond by saying that, quote, BuzzFeed confirmed alt-right in acting peaceful ethnojournalism. And the content that a lot of these big media organizations were pushing was, of course, over very divisive issues, whether race, sex, ethnicity, religions, it didn't matter, identity politics. But mostly it included a lot of lazy, bad journalism and a lot of name-calling, a lot of libel, a lot of defamation, a lot of just completely not caring about the facts but prioritizing emotions over those very important facts which in a court of law does not work into the benefit of those news organizations and the pieces that they were pushing forward and that's why we saw a lot of lawsuits not only publicly but also a lot of lawsuits that took place privately that, that honestly have very negatively affected a lot of these media organizations who are suffering financially now. Now, is this the sole reason why these layoffs, this media supposed bloodbath is happening? No, but it's a contributing factor and it's one of them to a lot of other ones that led us to the situation that we are at right now. Uh, other part of it is venture capital. Uh, a lot of it has been vulture investment firms and other people trying to get their hold of these news organizations to, of course, push a bigger agenda. And I think another part of it is, of course, just really, really bad journalism that has left a big distaste in a lot of people's mouths that they're not happy about. Since I would say, in my own personal opinion, that the media has absolutely ruined any form of civil discourse in our society, especially here in the United States. And with all of those factors, venture capital, clickbait, agenda, activism-driven journalism, and overinvestment, we're not only seeing BuzzFeed and Vice, but also major newspaper organizations also feel the same brunt of this economic restructuring that is happening right now, which will continue to happen throughout all of 2019 and only get worse from here. And what I expect to see is companies like Vice, Mike, or Vox join together and most likely merge into one kind of bigger cancerous organization <laughs> that will try to protect itself. Now, of course, legacy media like the Washington Post, which of course is bought off by special interests, will still continue to be bought off even at an economic loss because that economic loss to some interests who have control of such organizations is worth it to them for, of course, the influence. And even though these media companies are facing a major reorganization, even though they're losing funds left and right, can't sustain themselves as organizations, they still hold some influence that is very important for, of course, people who want all of it. Case in point, Jeff Bezos, which pretty much explains the current state of journalism today, which is just advertising by, of course, the very rich. And that's ultimately what it is. Now, my personal gripe with Vice comes after personal experiences with them as a news organization. A couple years ago, when they were still kind of underground, when they were still kind of rebellious, when they didn't have that corporate money, when they weren't activists pushing an agenda with, of course, big corporations funding them, when they were still underground, there was something to aspire to. They were covering and talking about things that the mainstream media would never touch. They were talking about things that actually blew people's minds away, and they did it in a way that made people actually think and comprehend on issues and things that, of course, would have never been talked about if it wasn't for real journalism that they used to do back in the day. And now when that was still happening, I came to them as an independent journalist with, of course, an important source that had information that was pretty mind-blowing. Information that I couldn't really delve into and deal with because I didn't have the money and the lawyers to be protected. And that's why I went with that information to Vice where we even had a contract between each other where we would collaborate, work together, and we would do a video together, and a part of my video would be on uh, YouTube, and the second part would be on Vice, and we would, of course, cross-promote each other in a bigger collaboration. The contract was signed, the deal was, uh, sh we shook on it, everything was set to go, 
until I was just left and then just totally ignored and blown off with them breaking the contract. And this didn't just happen once, it happened a second time, which I should have been smarter about with a very important contact to a very dangerous country that I was supposed to be in that I didn't want to just go in alone on and got screwed over that I found out later on as well and then Vice ended up also stealing some of my video footage which I had to fight to actually get compensated for so after having those personal experiences with Vice it didn't leave a good taste in my mouth especially seeing the downward spiral that they have been on ultimately shredding any form of credibility that they had in my eyes and being at the horrible situation that they're at right now. And honestly, with my personal grievances and what they've become, it's it's hard to have any sympathy here. Now, of course, not all of these 250 people are bad. There's probably legitimate, good, hardworking, honest people who have lost their ability to, to make a living wage, which is a loss here and doesn't need to be recognized. But honestly, the bigger media heads who sold out to the top dollar and have not been doing their right, honest job as journalism have created this problem and that's why we're seeing this correction, which again, this is only the beginning of. If you disagree with anything that I said in this video, let me know why in the comment section below. I always look forward to your feedback and your criticism, especially the constructive criticism and especially anything else you just want to get off your chest. It means a lot to even have this opportunity to be here working for you. And unlike Vice, we don't have any venture capitalist, big corporate globalist money, no Bank of America here. We only have you with your donations, especially with cryptocurrencies and other forms and other payments, like Subscribestar, we're able to finally be here as an independent news organization. And because of that, love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more here on youtube.com forward slash we are changed.